Um, afternoon, everybody. My name is Kali Rendwe Ranenyeni. You can call me Kali. And I am an e tutor. Thank you very much for your time. Um, so today we are going to speak about learning unit two, and that is specifically equilibrium output in the goods market and the use of fiscal policy to influence equilibrium output. So just a few rules, right? Please, for any questions that you may have, post on the forum or go onto the discussion forums on the website um, on my UNISA. We encourage you to use that forum to participate there, to ask questions, and the e-tutors are available to assist you there. So today we are looking at the equilibrium output in the goods market and the use of fiscal policy. So a couple of objectives here in the session that you need to, 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 to take home with you. You need to be able to describe the demand equation. You also need to be able to describe the equilibrium and equilibrium condition. You need to be able to calculate equilibrium level of output and income. Um, you need to be able to identify factors that may cause a change to the equilibrium level. And to do this, you need to know how you need to know how the demand of goods determine equilibrium output in words. You need to know how to explain this by chain of events. And you also need to know how to explain this by way of equations and diagrams. And today we are going to do all three of those. So in terms of your demand equation, you will see from um, the previous pages of your study guide, we have the demand equation there of a closed economy. What is the demand equation? So the demand equation consists of all the variables that make up demand, right? So this is your consumption level, this is your investment, and this is your government spending. We don't speak of exports and imports because this is the closed ec economy, right? You'll deal with that in Learning Unit 7, where the economy is now open to imports and exports. So your functions, um, which have been covered in detail, I don't cover them here, is your consumption function, which is your autonomous consumption, um, plus your disposable income. Your disposable income, just a reminder, is income like taxes. Then you've got your investment function, which is also autonomous. And then you also got your government function, which is your government expenditure. So that's how um, your demand equation is. So your demand equation, which is symbolized by Z, is equal to your consumption, investment and government. You need to substitute your functions into this equation. So that means substituting C, that means substituting I, and that also means substituting G, right? So you then have your demand equation equals to C0 plus C minus Y plus C into Y minus T, which is your consumption function. You add to that your investment and you add to that your government spending. So that's really your demand equation. Then you need to understand what is the equilibrium position. So the equilibrium position or the equilibrium condition in the goods market is that you, equilibrium will always equals to demand. So this is y is equals to z. So replacing y by z, you will see how this works. So you replace y by z, you then have y equals to the equation we had before, which is c0 plus C minus your disposable income plus investment and government spending. Your equilibrium level is equals to 1 over 1 minus C into autonomous spending. Autonomous spending is equals to autonomous consumption plus autonomous investment plus government spending minus um, your marginal propensity to consume times your taxes. This equation is very, very important 
and this is the basis of equilibrium level of outcome. So this is what you get after solving for y. So the tip is your demand equation, which is z equals to c plus i plus g. You replace y by z because at equilibrium, y is equals to z, which is the demand function. You solve for y, which means taking all the items with y to one side and removing the common factor, and then you solve for y. Um, the equation one, I mean, the part of the equilibrium level one divided by one minus C, that is known as the multiplier. So that is the multiplier or the Keynesian multiplier, which we will talk about briefly. So here we've got an example to test whether we understand how to calculate the equilibrium level of output. We are also asked to describe the equilibrium condition. We are asked to write down the equilibrium equation and explain what the equation tells us. And we are also asked to list the factors that will change the equilibrium. Bye. So we are doing um, an example now to help us determine equilibrium level using equations. Remember, I said you need to know how to do this in three ways. So you need to know how to calculate the equilibrium level using the equation. You need to know how to calculate. You need to know how to explain it using um, chain of events, and you also need to know how to explain it using equations. Now this is an example for equations. So we've been given here the values, right? We've been given C as 0 0.8. This is the marginal propensity to consume. We've been given C0 as 500. This is the autonomous consumption. We've been given investment, fixed investment as 300. We've been given government expenditure as 400. And we've been given taxes as 300. Now, remember the equation. The equation is simple. If you remember the equation, you just need to plug in the values. So the equation is where my pointer is at, which is y equals to 1 over 1 minus marginal propensity to consume multiplied by the autonomous spending. Autonomous spending, C0 plus I plus G minus CT. So all we have to do is substitute the values. So C is 0 0.8 in our example. C0 is 500. I is 300. G is 400. And T is 300. And C is 0 0.8. So we do the math. So if you start with what's in the brackets, 500 plus 800 plus 400 minus 0 0.8 of 300. Um, so how you do this, you, you, I don't know how many of you have a maths background, but you would start with the stuff in brackets and the stuff in brackets is 0 0.8 times 300. So if you take your calculator, 0 0.8 times 300, that's 240, it's 500, plus 300, plus 400, minus 240. That's 960, right? Then you solve for the multiplier. So 1 minus 1 minus 0 0.8. You start with the bottom, which is 0 0.2. So 1 over 0 0.2 is 5. So you have 5 times 960 being 4,800. That is your answer. So the trick to doing this is one, remember to always use your board mass rule. Always start with the stuff that is in the brackets. So you'll start with the CT, then you do the calculation, and then you solve the, the multiplier. So basically, to determine your equilibrium output, you are substituting your given values into the equilibrium output equation. Why? equals to 1 divided by 1 minus C into autonomous spending. Autonomous spending, it's C, consumption plus investment plus government minus C times T. 
So I hope it's clear how to determine equilibrium um, output. I won't answer the other questions because what I wanted you to get here is really the, the equation and how to substitute the values. Um, so the other questions list factors that will change. So factors that will change are your autonomous, everything that's in this equation. So if C changes, for example, if marginal propensity to consume changes, Y will change. If C zero changes, Y will change. If I changes, Y will change. If G changes, Y will change. If T changes, Y will change. I hope it is clear. So these are the forces that are going to change your equilibrium level. And these are the things that are in your equation. So as a diagram, you need to be able to explain this as a diagram. Remember here we are talking about the equilibrium in the goods market. And we discussed that at equilibrium, the demand for goods is equals to Y, right? So the way you interpret this diagram here, this straight line at 45 degrees, this gives you all possible combinations where Z is equals to Y. Z is your demand function and it's on the vertical axis and Y is on the horizontal axis. Your equilibrium will be the intersection of the demand and this 45 degree line. And this is what this, this diagram is really. So you just need to remember that at any given time on your vertical axis, you've got a Z. On your Y axis, you've got the, the, the level of output. Your 45 degree line is all the possible combinations at which your income is equals to your demand. And the equilibrium is where the demand equation intersects that line. So as a way of um, explaining how this works in diagrams, you will be given the information, just like we were given with the equation. You are given C0, investment, government spending, taxes, and marginal propensity to consume, and you are requested to draw the demand curves for Z1 and Z2. So if we start with Z1, all you need to recall is you need to know where the intersection is for Z. So what is Z? Z is autonomous spending. So what you would be spending if Y was zero? What is autonomous spending? C0, I mean, not C, C0, plus G, plus I, minus CT. That is autonomous spending. Remember your equilibrium level equation, Y equals to 1 over 1 minus C, open brackets, autonomous spending. So that autonomous spending, that's all you need to do for this, for this question, or for a question that's requiring you to draw. Calculate your autonomous spending. Show your autonomous spending on your vertical axis. So for Z1, autonomous spending is 50 plus 60 plus 46 minus 0 0.8 of 20. So like I said before, you start with what's in the brackets. So 0 0.8 times 20 is 16. So then your autonomous spending is 50 plus 16 plus 46. I'm just calculating 0 0.8 times 20. That's 16. Um, so then it's 50 plus 60 plus 46 minus 16. And the answer is 140. So on your vertical axis, you put 140. You draw a line where the 45 degree line intersects your demand curve. That is your equilibrium point. I hope that's clear. You do the same for Z2. Z2, you can draw it as well. You calculate autonomous spending. You start with 0 0.6 times 10, which is Texas, and that's 6 to 30 plus 26, plus 16, 
minus 6, 66. And the equilibrium point is at E0, where the two curves clear. So the tip with the diagrams, always calculate autonomous spending. I've put it down there for you in the presentation. Calculate autonomous spending and show that at the intersection of the vertical line. So the next part we're going to discuss is the use of fiscal policy to influence equilibrium outcome. So what you need to understand here is what is fiscal policy? What is the impact of government spending on outcome? What is the impact of government of taxes on outcome? And also what is the expansionary fiscal policy and what is a contractionary fiscal policy? So I think you know what is a fiscal policy, right? Um, a fiscal policy is a government interventions by way of government spending or taxes. When Treasury um, changes government spending at the beginning of the year, when they have the budget and they tell us what is happening with government spending and taxes, we call that policy fiscal policy. The opposite of fiscal policy is monetary policy, which the Reserve Bank is in charge of. We don't discuss that today. That will be part of a different class. So you can see why fiscal policy can be used to impact equilibrium outcome. Look at our equation. Remember, equilibrium level of output, which in this slide is Y0, is equals to the multiplier, which is 1 divided by 1 minus C, into auto multiply by the autonomous spending. You can see G and T feature in the autonomous spending equation. And you can see the, the mathematical symbol in front of it. So because uh, G is positive, we say that equilibrium level of outcome is positively related to G. So if G increases, equilibrium level will also increase. Whereas with T, um, there's a negative relationship, and because of the negative relationship, an increase in taxes will reduce your equilibrium level. So that is the trick in knowing what the impact is, whether the impact will be positive or negative. It is dependent on the sign. So we just said with government spending, if it increases, we know our equilibrium output will also increase. But with taxes, because of the negative sign, they're negatively related. So an increase in taxes will result in a reduction in output. So let's have an example. And now you need to be drawing this in much more detail, right? So before we just drew um, the equilibrium um, as E0, and E0, but we didn't calculate it. So in this example, we are going to calculate it. So let us assume that government spending is 400. So here's the information that we are given. We were given this in the last, in the last example. Marginal propensity to consume is 0 0.8. Um, autonomous consumption is 500. Investment is 300. Government spending is 400. And taxes are 300. And the question is for you to calculate what? The equilibrium level of output. So like I said in our previous example, we just need to calculate autonomous spending and the multiplier. So we plug in those values. So where we see marginal propensity to consume, which is C, we replace that with 0 0.8. And where we see C0, we replace it with 500. Where we see investment, we replace it with 300. Where we see government spending, we replace it with 400. And where we see taxes, we replace it with 300. As we did in our previous calculation, we start with what's in the brackets. So that is 0 0.8 times 300. That is 240. We then calculate 500 plus 300 plus 400 minus 240, we get 960. We then calculate our multiplier, which is one over 0 0.2. That gives us five. So we then have five times 960, which gives us 
4,800. So on our curve, our Z, Z function, um, on the vertical axis, our autonomous spending is 960 as we calculated. So you will see 960 as an intersection there on the vertical um, axis. Like I was saying, your autonomous spending is 960 and there's an intersection at 960 on the vertical axis. We do the same for the next demand function and we are told the government spending has increased to 4, 4, 450. So you will see now, plugging in everything as we did in the last example, we still get our multiplier as 5, but our autonomous spending is now 1010. So remember I said because G is positively related to Y, an increase in G is an increase in equilibrium level of output. That an increase in G has resulted in an increase in equilibrium level of output of 5050. So there's been a multiplier effect. G increases by 50, but the change in Y is 250. I hope that is clear. Okay. We can do the same exercise with Texas. I won't do it because it's the same exercise and we are running out of time. But you just need to plug in. So plug in C, plug in C0, plug in I, plug in G, and plug in Texas. Solve autonomous spending first, what is in the brackets. Then solve your multiplier. You start with your denominator, and then you multiply. So you take the multiplier, you multiply it by the autonomous spending. You then get your equilibrium level of output. So in this case, you will see that we are talking of a decrease in taxes, so we expect an increase in the level of output. And you can see autonomous spending is 960 in our first example, and it's a thousand in our second example. And that has resulted in an increase in equilibrium level of output. So in terms of chain of events, you need to explain how this is the case. So let's take, for example, a decrease in tax. So a dec what does a decrease in tax do? A decrease in tax increases your disposable income. You have more to spend because you are paying less to SARS. If you are paying less to SARS, what happens to the consumption? Look at the consumption function. You then have more to spend. If you have more to spend, you then have, you contribute more to demand, you demand more, and therefore your output is more. So that's the chain of events. And that's how you need to be able to explain. That is the end of our presentation today. I hope to explain to you how you determine the equilibrium level of output in the goods market and how you use a fiscal policy to influence it. Remember, the art is knowing your demand equation. The art is substituting the given information. The art is starting by what is in the brackets, your autonomous spending, and then you solve for your multiplier by starting with what's in the denominator, and then you multiply that to get your equilibrium level of output. In terms of fiscal policy, government spending is positively related to equilibrium level of output. So an increase in government spending will result in an increase in output, whereas a decrease in government spending will result in a decrease in output. With regards to taxes, there's a negative relationship a decrease in taxes will result in an increase in equilibrium output. An increase in taxes 
will result in a decrease in equilibrium level of output. So that's how we deal with, with that. And that's how the fiscal policy influences equilibrium level of output. I hope um, the session has been helpful to you and that you will have more questions as you go through it. I encourage you to log on to my UNISA site, post your questions there that are relevant for this discussion, post them under Learning Unit 2. Any other questions that you may have, you can post them on the relevant discussion forum and we will be there to assist you. Thank you very much for your time and have a great day further. Goodbye.